Real parents, real stories. It's the Meet the Parents podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 52 of the Meet the Parents podcast and another half an hour of chat from some of your favourite parent bloggers. I'm Tim from Slouching Towards Thatcham and today I'm chatting with Hannah from Budding Smiles and Mark from Best Dad I Can Be. Good evening both of you. Hello. Hi Tim. Hi there. So this week we're going to talk about some of the highs and lows of being a parent. Now, parenting has more ups and downs than the world's longest game of snakes and ladders. We all know that, but Hannah is particularly aware of that at the moment after a week or so in which she got to experience the highs of celebrating Martha's first birthday and the lows of dealing with a sick child. I think it's fair to say it was quite a week where a scheduled appearance on last week's podcast suddenly turned into a no-show. It's a scenario I'm sure all parents are familiar with in some form or another where, you know, the best laid plans go out of the window, social engagements get cancelled or work diaries get hastily rearranged. But at the same time, there's so much that is positive and joyful and exhilarating about being a parent. So this week we're going to go round the three of us in turn and I'm going to ask each of us to highlight some of our own personal highs and lows from our time as parents. So Mark, let's start with you as you've had the most time to accumulate fond parental memories and possibly some things you wish you could forget. So talk us through one of the highlights of your well now 20 odd year parenting career. Okay, well, I, I mean, astonishingly, that just this last week, we, we've had a massive, massive highlight, which is just fantastic. So my daughter, Eleanor, is at Sheffield University. She's played a lot of hockey while she's been there. Together with a few of her friends, they formed a, a women's football team, which was called Wocky from Women's Hockey. They entered the People's FA Cup. They got through the local and the regional heats. They got to the national finals at Birmingham. They won the People's FA Cup. Wow. That's amazing. And just fantastic. Just fantastic. And we were able to watch the final was live streamed on the BBC. And they will now go to Wembley on Cup final day. And they will be presented with their trophy for the Women's Higher Education People's FA Cup in front of 90,000 people. How cool is that? Just the most fantastic thing. And I think of all those out of my three, um, Ellie was the sporting one. And and I just think of all those days standing on the touchline, watching cross country, watching her play football, freezing to death, getting wet feet you know, c- consoling her after defeats and, and, and celebrating with her after wins. And it just makes it all worthwhile. Well, it was worthwhile anyway, but this is a real sort of icing on the cake and it's her last year at university. She becomes a proper person quite soon and um, phenomenal, fantastic. Just there's just something which will stay with her for the rest of her life. So, And that's just happened in the past week. So just, just delighted for her. Absolutely delighted. I mean, obviously, Tim, the only downside is that she'll be forced to watch Arsenal in the FA Cup. But but (laughs) How did I I know that was coming? (laughs) Yeah, what a fantastic experience. It's a real once-in-a-lifetime thing. I've been to I've been to Wembley many times as a spectator, but actually to you know to have the the privilege of going out there on the uh, on the field itself is uh, yeah no that that will be and and something that she'll have for the rest of her life. Fantastic, you know, and that they entered it with with no thought of winning, just of taking part, which I think is what the People's FA Cup is all about. And um, that there you go, they fought their way through and. Um, Obviously, Dad staying away from the touch lines was a good luck charm, so so it worked. Mm-hmm. No doubt the team will be sponsored by Emirates in no time. 
Yeah, absolutely right. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so Hannah, how about you? Any particular highlights? I think actually my highlight has been really recent as well. Obviously not last week when we were struck down by my Toby's horrible sickness bug, but the week before that we were in Centre Parks and it was just honestly the most wonderful time we've ever had as a family. And uh, that's from when Toby's been born as well. So the fact that it was the four of us, which is we're not having any more children. So just having that experience and knowing that that's us now and we had this amazing week and knowing that there's you know going to be more to come it really really was just amazing it was just perfect and we hadn't really planned too much we hadn't got any expectations we just sort of went with the flow of it and it was wonderful the kids loved it Martha learned how to say duck and and Toby was on fantastic form it was just really really nice and it was definitely for both Phil and I a huge huge highlight since becoming parents it's funny isn't it sometimes those are the most enjoyable holidays of all where you don't have any particular plans and you're not you know running around trying to see landmarks here museums there go to restaurants and and all the stuff because because we were like that as well I mean particularly you know before kids came along holidays were things where you you know you ran around non-stop from dawn till dusk whereas now actually mm. with with young kids just getting away from all the all the kind of chores and the the more mundane aspects of family life and just getting away and and having time to yourselves as a as a family to enjoy yourselves makes such a it's such a great thing to do and it's a real luxury yeah it is and you know we spent a fortune going to Lanzarote last year but I think we had such high hopes for it and we built it up so much that when inevitably Toby got an ear infection and was horrible and Martha was a very overheated four month old and was waking up every half an hour to an hour during the night and we were exhausted and everyone was miserable we came away feeling like we just wasted more money than we could truly afford whereas this time we spent a lot less money we had fewer expectations and we just loved it so we'll definitely be going back yeah and and we found exactly the same recently when we we went down to Weymouth to spend a few days there were a couple of times we thought not sure we're going to be able to fill out an entire day here and yet give the kids the chance to run around on a beach making sand castles play in the amusement arcades and have fish and chips at the end of the day and they're as happy as anything it doesn't it doesn't take big stuff does it no no, I, I I would absolutely agree with that. I mean, all I can say to you, Hannah, is that as your children get older, they will continue to love centre parks, and and ours did. And and wherever we took them, they always wanted to go back to centre parks because they just they love the independence of being able to go to the shops on their own, going off and and doing different things. It was just a lovely, lovely holiday. Sometimes we used to rent a cottage and. Um, there's one particularly nice one we rented in Scotland that had a small lock stroke lake down at the bottom of the garden. And that was lovely. They found an old boat. And it's like you say about Weymouth, Tim, you know, they were they were happy doing sort of swallows and Amazons things. And, and the, they, they put their phones down for a day. And it was it was fantastic. It really was. Yeah, it's nice to be reminded, isn't it? Or it's nice for the kids to be reminded, at least, that um, you don't necessarily have to do everything that involves screens, and you can still have. Mm. They can still enjoy the simple pleasures because they were. Yeah, you know, we'd go into an amusement arcade, and you know, an hour and a half later, they would have to be physically dragged out, clutching their their tub of two p coins. <laughs> yeah. I guess as for me, I'm not saying this is my biggest highlight, but it probably is my most recent one. And that was reflecting on Cara turning five last week. You know, when I look at Cara, I see a a girl who is bubbly and expressive and happy, occasionally a bit of a diva and a drama queen. But most of all, I see a girl who seems to have gone from a newborn baby to five going on 15 faster than seems possible I mean I thought I'd seen it all after the two boys but knowing that Carver was going to be our third and last child has meant that I haven't taken it all for granted in the way maybe I might have done had we had a boy and yeah it it is just as well I mean having a, a girl after two boys and never having had a sister myself it's been so much more of a 
different and eye-opening experience than I ever thought it would be. She, She's so different to the two boys. And some of that, I'm sure, is down to her being a girl. But she's very much her own personality anyway. She's different to the boys, but also she doesn't obviously take after either her mother or me. She's by far the least predictable of our kids, and I really love that about her. And it's, I know it's a bit of a cliche to say she completes our family, but but she really does. Of course, yeah, we would have been happy if we'd ended up with three boys, but having a mixed set of children has has really kind of rounded out the parental experience for me. And you know, Mark, I'm I'd be interested in your perspective on this, as you know, you have a a family, a similar family setup. And can you can you imagine life without a mix of sons and daughters? No, I can't. No. And and I'm while you were talking there, I was just feeling slightly envious because I think to have a, 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 a around the age that Cara is, it's a lovely, lovely age. And and you have a really um, special relationship with your daughter at that age. But no, not for one minute would I have wanted three girls or three boys. You know, the fact that we've we've got two two boys and a girl, as you know, Ellie's in the middle of her two brothers. No, I'm really, really grateful that, that, that we've got boys and girls. Um, and I certainly wouldn't have wanted it any other way. You know, I've, I, I thought it was really interesting there what you said about them be, being their own, own people, because as, the, as ours have got older, you know, our three could not be more different in their characters, their political outlooks. I, I really like that. I really do value that. Hannah, obviously, you've got one of each. So, you know, how how do you feel about that? See, I'm slightly different. I wanted four boys. I did not see myself as the mum of a girl, which I don't know why, because I've got a wonderful relationship with my own mum, and so from that perspective, I should have dreamed of having a daughter for you know spa days and and lunches and all the rest of it, like I've enjoyed and continue to enjoy with my mum. But I just saw myself as having boys. And before Toby came along, Phil and I were going to have four kids. And so I was fully prepared to have four boys. Then Toby came along and we debated for a while at stopping at one. And then we found out with Martha, we didn't find out whether Toby was a girl or a boy because I just knew he was a boy. It seemed silly to to waste the uh, sonographer's breath. But when we found out at the 20-week scan that Martha was a girl... I was just so shocked and then I burst into tears and then I realized I was crying happy tears and it it was just like going through this crazy extreme emotion of oh my god what the hell do you do with a girl through to oh my god I'm having a girl and it was just absolutely incredible so again now that I've got her and Toby, I, I wouldn't change it for the world because it's just incredible. And it's it's every day is a new experience with both of them. And they're both incredibly stroppy, incredibly stubborn individuals. And Martha's fiery side is certainly coming out. It's like she's turned one and decided to go, well, I might not be a redhead, but I'm certainly going to have the temper that goes with it. Um, and so her and Toby are fighting over toys and they're screaming at each other. But at the same time, Martha's my gentle, cuddly mummy's girl. And Toby's just this whirlwind of activity 24 hours a day, it feels. And it's amazing. I love it so much. So that's some of the joys of parenting. So let's move on now to the darker side of it. You know, the sleepless nights, that first trip to A&D, you know, the moment you discover that your sweet little child has morphed into a monosyllabic teenager. (laughs) We all have times as parents that we would quite like to blot from our memories or where we wish we could take a certain moment back again. Um, You know, Everyone does, no matter how perfectly curated our lives may appear on social media sometimes. So, Mark, let's start with you again. Any particular lowlights or regrets? I've got tons of regrets, Tim. I I look back at particular situations and I think I I could have handled it better. Well, I I don't think. I know I could have handled it better. You think as a parent, oh, I didn't get that right. I didn't get that right. But but I look at the kids and they, they seem to have turned out okay you know I, I went through a very difficult time with um, with Ellie when she was 15 16 17 um we didn't really speak to each other very much you know and if we did it usually involved something flying through the air she once threw a sandwich at me I remember that with particular affection you know <laughs> Eleanor and I are very much alike 
so that's probably why why we didn't get on. But that was a particularly tough time. Alex has got his um, first serious girlfriend now, and and uh, she she's fine. You know, she's she's pretty nice, and and um, she seems to allow him to get on with revision for his A levels and things like that. But just just going back to Eleanor, I mean, her first serious boyfriend, uh, you know, I, I, I would have cheerfully sold him to white slave traders, you know. But um, one piece of advice, Tim, you know, going forward, it's that um, if Cara mentions a boy, don't don't whatever you do say. I've never come across such a ugly waster with no prospects at all, because she will immediately fall in love with him. You know, that was a grim period, but we got through it. And Eleanor and I are. A tremendous friends now you know and we in terms of the book that i'm working on i mean, she's she's been brilliant you know she's critiqued that for me and come back with some really good suggestions and i and and i really value her as a not just as my daughter you know but but as somebody i respect for her talents professionally you know she, she's she's great love her to pieces so how did you deal with that period when the relationship was strained I think there, I, I've got to really, really pay credit to my wife. Um, you know, parenting is a remarkably difficult thing to do. And one of the things that I've gained, if you like, from from being a parent is a phenomenal admiration for single parents. How, how they cope, I do not know. Because sometimes it, you need two of you, and you need two of you really, really badly. That time when when ellie and i weren't really communicating very well for a couple of years bev kind of got eleanor through that and kept kept her on track academically and all that you know did did all the all the essentials while i almost waited it out until the storm had passed because we were just as soon as we started to to discuss anything one of us would would just take the discussion off in on in the wrong direction so that time when when you know mum and dad were just absolutely essential and as i say how single parents do it i just do not know and i am just full of admiration for for anybody who who copes like that yeah it's a really good point actually isn't it i think around you know parenting often benefits when you are part of a you know a team as a mum and a dad and there are certainly times with our kids where there are certain things they do that immediately get under my wife's skin and I have to step in and the same this absolutely the same works the other way where there are times when I just don't know how to handle a particular situation and my wife will step in and be uh, and be brilliant and sometimes it's I guess it's a bit like tag team wrestling isn't it sometimes you need someone to tag you out yeah it, uh, absolutely now Hannah, what about you? I mean, Toby and Martha are both great kids, but it hasn't all been plain sailing all the time, has it? So, Oh, no, no, far from it. <laughs> so just t- talk us through some of the, the low moments that you've encountered along the way. I mean, we're not even three years into this whole parenting malarkey, but it has been a very, very crazy time. Um, Toby's baby days... As, as long ago as it, as it feels now, I didn't enjoy them. And I hate that I say that, but it's true. He had terrible silent reflux. He would scream for 10 hours a day for the first six months of his life. And it brought Phil and I to our knees. I mean, I think it's a testament to our marriage how strong we are because at no point did either of us feel like we didn't want to be in that relationship and, and dealing with it all. But it was it was awful. And a bit like Mark said, we had each other and we had certainly my parents and some very good friends who were a phenomenal support to us. But it was hell, to be quite honest. And, and I don't know how people who have got very seriously ill children do it. And, you know, just so much respect to them because Toby at no point was his life in danger but purely he was screaming constantly he didn't sleep breastfeeding was a nightmare just everything felt like it was so much harder than it should have been I expected sleep deprivation and I expected crying obviously I wasn't naive but it was just 
absolutely horrific and um you know when when people who work in childcare saying to you oh, I've never known a baby like it I don't know how you're coping it's actually far from feeling stronger from that you kind of feel oh bloody hell <laughs> it's just proof how bad it is um but you know we, we got through it and he is a very shall we say spirited child but you know, now that he's that bit older, he's incredibly funny. He's incredibly clever. Um, he keeps us on our toes, but he's absolutely amazing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't change what we went through because it certainly makes me. A, it made me appreciate Martha's baby days a lot more, um, and take notice of of how amazing it was having her as a baby. But also, I appreciate Toby's good days now. Because at one point, our bond, we really struggled to get a bond, Toby and I. And so there were a lot of times where I didn't think I was ever going to have much of a relationship with my own son. And that was terrible, terrible to thought to go through a mum's head or any parent's head. And so now when Toby comes and wraps his little arms around me and says that he loves me or calls for me at two o'clock in the morning, I actually love it because... And, uh, you know, there was a point I just didn't think I was going to have that. Yeah, and I guess it it, make, it does make you appreciate those moments that much more, doesn't it? it mm. it's, it's not something that you ever take for granted, knowing you know some of the challenges that you had in those early months. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess, you know, for for me, in I guess in some ways, you know, we've been incredibly lucky that we've had, you know, three relatively normal, you know, healthy, you know, kids things have been pretty much as good as as we could have ever hoped that, that they could be but I, I guess in my world I'm living through one of my toughest periods as a parent at the moment as Isaac's just at that age so he's um he's almost nine and a half now he's starting on that journey from from boyhood to manhood he's not quite turned into Kevin the teenager yet but he's there are certainly signs that he's heading that way and it's I think it's not so much seeing the changes in behaviour and attitude as the hormones gently start to kick in. I think it's it's more the realisation that change is inevitable and that he's he's no longer just the sweet, innocent, polite, generous kid that he always used to be. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's, he still is 80, 90% of the time. But it, it's facing up to the fact that, you know, he's growing up and he's independent and he wants to assert himself um, a little bit more and you know we've started to have those conversations about what puberty actually entails yes I've started to have the talk with him that one got delegated to me very quickly but before you know it he'll be surgically attached to a smartphone grunting monosyllabically and shutting himself away in his bedroom not wanting any contact at all with his uncool parents there's a big part of me that doesn't want to lose the little boy who always used to be so thoughtful and protective of his younger siblings and liked nothing more than than an early morning snuggle. But at the same time, it's it's inevitable that he will grow up, and you know, and with that he will change, and he already is changing. So you know that's a really that's really kind of tough thing for me to deal with at the moment. It's just you you know your kids are going to grow up or. Um, at some point you just kind of hope that it won't be it won't be just yet tim i i absolutely empathize with that alex used to be a fantastic just a fantastic child to read to to snuggle up with in bed you know i gosh i miss that so much he was a really he was a child that had a real sense of inner calm you know you could have had the most dreadful day at work and you would sit on the bed and read to him and and all of it would just disappear. I know exactly what you mean. I mean, you, you child gets to nine, ten, and and you sort of see this teenager just lurking in the shadows, don't you? That uh, you get a glimpse of the teenager that they're going to become. The, the only the only consolation I will say to you, Tim, is that at sixteen, seventeen, you you also start to get a glimpse of the young adult that they will become you will see all the work that you've put in start to pay off and you will sit around the dinner table one day and, and you will think, you know, that these are that these are pretty good young adults that I've got here. 
I guess I should also say that I don't miss all those years of sleepless nights at all now. You'll get them back, Tim. I mean, when they come in from a nightclub at four o'clock in the morning, you'll get them back. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you know, as a dad in a house where all three of our kids were breastfed for varying lengths of time, I'm not going to complain too much about my lot in life. But yeah, while Heather was doing night feeds, it consequently fell to me to get up with a a young Isaac when he used to wake up at 4am every single day or the the phase he went through I guess it was for about six months or so either side of his first birthday when he would regularly wake up crying at two in the morning inconsolable and I would I would have to quietly take him downstairs and we'd we used to just sit downstairs in the dark and watch music videos on TV together it was it was actually where I discovered the soothing effect that Suzanne Vega had on him in the wee small hours <laughs> and we used to just sit on the we just used to sit on the couch for hours until both of us nodded off and he'd you know he'd be snuggled up in my arms and that that's one of the things that I'm really missing now that he's he's growing up I mean obviously he's not like that anymore he just gets up at quarter past five every morning instead and takes himself off downstairs with his uh, with his tablet. I don't want to finish this discussion on a downer, so let's finish with a a quick fire um, run around the table. So, in you know one or two sentences, just sum sum up one more personal high point of being a parent. So, Hannah, uh, watching Toby and Martha's bond develop and just get better and better and know that uh, that I did that and uh, and Mark oh just having talked about the problems I went through with with my daughter last father's day she she didn't give me a present she wrote me a letter just saying thank you for everything that I'd done with sports and writing and everything like that and and just the most precious gift she could ever have given me even talking about it now is making tears prick at the back of my eyes. It was just so, so lovely. That's really cool. And I'm amazed that kids these days still know what letters are. Yeah, hand handwritten with a with a pen and on paper, yeah. Excellent. And um yeah, for for me, in a similar vein, it's it's those little spontaneous moments. So it's the little cuddles and the unprompted I love you's and when they they write their own birthday cards or Mother's Day cards and design them themselves. And, you know, the smiles that that break out on their faces when they crave and receive approval for something they've done. So there you have it. A few lowlights, but many highlights of being a parent. Uh, it can be a tough job a lot of the time, but for many of us, it's also the single most exciting and rewarding job we will ever have, which is probably just as well because we're stuck with it for life. <laughs> So, before we go, what have we been up to recently? Uh, Hannah? Well, aside from going on holiday and Martha turning one and Toby having a week of sickness bug, somewhere in amongst all that, I actually um, was offered a job, which I've accepted. So, I now have four weeks um, until I start my new job as a content manager for for a company, which I'm very, very excited about. Ah, Congratulations. Thank you. That's really good. Thank you. So that's that'll be alongside the blog and alongside um, Apples and Pips. So uh, if I wasn't quite busy enough, this will certainly make sure that I'm uh, not getting any free time whatsoever. <laughs> and it's a good job you've had so much prior training dealing with sleepless nights. Exactly. <laughs> how, how about you, Mark? Just busy, busy with work. Um, the general election and, and everything else seems to have thrown up a demand for um, quite quite a lot of content from from financial services clients, and working on my Pennine Web book and getting that finished off, and uh, working on the website and and everything else. Yeah, not not so much sleepless nights, but a few very early mornings thrown into it. And uh, and for me, this week, this last week has been all about Cara's fifth birthday, as I've already touched on. Um, yeah, it was actually her birthday on Friday, but we had at least a week's worth of building excitement from the most exuberant and expressive of our three children. Um, At one stage, she even woke up one morning, uh, she was sleeping in our bed at the time, and told me that she was going to stay in bed for a little bit longer so that I would have time to make her a birthday card and bake her a cake. (laughs) 
we had a bit of a day of it on on the Friday itself. At, you know, opening presents in the morning, including a new big girl scooter, and having a little birthday picnic on our living room floor in the evening. Um, on Saturday, we had her grandparents and uncle come to visit. So you know, more presents, more showering with attention, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then on Sunday, we had her party proper with all her friends. So you know, bouncy castle, soft play, and uh, and a birthday tea. So a proper three day celebration. The Star Wars trilogy seems short by comparison, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were made on a smaller budget as well. And, of course, I wouldn't have it any other way. And that's it for another episode of the Meet the Parents podcast. We'll be back next week, but in the meantime, here's where you can find the three of us online. Hannah? I'm at buddingsmiles.co.uk, and I'm on all social media as at buddingsmiles. And Mark? The um, blog is at bestdadicanbe.com. And can I also slip in a commercial for my new author website for the book at markrichards.co.uk? And uh, I'm at Thatcham Dad, and my blog is slouchingtowardsthatcham.com. So you can download this podcast on iTunes and Android devices, on our website at meettheparentspodcast.com, and via a variety of podcasting apps. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Parents Podcast and Facebook at facebook.com slash meet the parents podcast. Anyway, thanks for listening and do please join us again next week. Good night. Good night.